Hey everybody, welcome to Falcon Plays the Curious Expedition Alpha 10 Full Steam Ahead version. Uh, we did a one-shot on the Curious Expedition, and the feedback I got from you guys is you guys want to see a bit more of the game itself, so I figured, you know what, let's make this a little bit of a mini-series for now. We'll play it a bit longer and see what you guys think over time. If you guys want to see more beyond this little mini-series type of standpoint, I will continue going forward. If not, it's cool, we will wrap it up. But at least for now, we're going to go full steam ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see what I did? Never mind. Let's get into the game already, Falcon. Hmm. You know what? Let's actually go with Charles Darwin. We'll switch it up. Sorry, Nikola Tesla. No offense, but we'll go with Charles Darwin over here. And let's see here. All right. So let's let's go back to um, Doseki's voice here. Ah, uh, welcome back to the Explorers Club, old friend. Have you heard that we are building a statue to honor the expeditions of our most famous members? Word is that you have a good chance of seeing your likeness on that statue. I think it goes from, like, Dos Equis to, like, weird, uh, Romanian type of accent for some reason. I'm not sure why that happens, but it, it, apparently it does. However, I am afraid to tell you that you are not the only candidate. You see, it, it happens towards the end, right? You and your rivals have six expeditions to prove who is the most famous explorer within our club. So this time around, I'm rolling against Isabella Bird. Alistair Crowley, what goes on in your head? Okay, stop. Marcus Gorvey and Richard Francis Burton, Mustachio Man. Alrighty, now go explore the adventure at Waits. Good. Or I should say good, I'm not doing... <laughs> I'm not doing the voice anymore. This is my voice now. Alrighty, so we have Alistair Crowley over here hanging out in South America. In Africa we have... Um, I forgot your name already, I apologize. And Marcus Gorvey, if I'm right. And uh, Mustachio Man, somewhere over here by Australia, one of these islands over here. And we have... Oh, my geography's gonna kick my ass here. <laughs> Is it somewhere in China, Soviet Union, Russia? I'm calling it Soviet Union. This guy, I'm still stuck in the fucking past here. Jesus, Soviet Union. Wow. Anyway, let's start the expedition <laughs> Good God almighty. I'm sorry, guys, I'm stuck in the past, what can I say? I, I, I still live in the 80s, apparently. Either way, eagerly awaiting or eagerly anticipating the upcoming adventure, I boarded the ship. The captain had yet to arrive, so I sat on the pier and waited. Someone approached me with a request. He needed to have a message delivered to the chief of a village located in the region where we were headed to. Let's go ahead and accept it. I hope you're giving me some coordinates as well, my friend. He handed us a letter which I promised to deliver. Just in time, our ship was ready to leave the harbor. That one's really unfortunate because we're not getting an extra set of hands for this mission, unfortunately. It was just somebody who's like, here, here's a letter, take it to the chief. What? I'm not sure what's in that letter, too. What if it's like a bad thing? What if he's over there, like, you know, insulting the chief's mama or something, and I'm over here handing that letter to him? That's gonna be my head on a stick, man. Literally and figuratively. But whatever, I accepted it. Let's set sail. I hope he gave me some coordinates, too. That's what I'm a little bit worried about here. Just over here, just roaming in the dark. Alrighty, maybe we should attempt to deliver the letter first. Thankfully, the man had pinpointed the location of the village on our map. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Alrighty, so continue. Here is the village. Excellent. So, um, we have... Let's look at our party members here really quickly. So, Charles Darwin. He's got Butterfly Enthusiast, and he's got that letter to deliver. We have Anupam Sorabji... Sorabji... Okay, I'm not entirely sure. He's a Persian translator, though, so that should be pretty good. This scholar will improve your communication with indigenous tribes, allow allows one to rest in the villages and increase the sanity gain. Oh, I can rest in the villages with this guy. Yes, that's really good. So remember, with Nikola Tesla, it was 140 in the one shot um, because he had the increased sanity, right? With uh, Charles Darwin, we don't have that ability anymore, but we're at 110, so it's not that big of a drop, hopefully. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the red one is. Let's see here. Superstitious. Suffers from irrational fear of what is unknown or mysterious. So he could probably be an issue. Like if we're uh, removing things from shrines, maybe. He might think of curses and whatnot. Let's see here. Now the dice rolling, this is something I'm going to preface really quickly by saying I'm not comfortable with the combat whatsoever. I still don't really quite understand it. Um, I'm going to try to do my best. If anything, just flee from battles. But I've had like probably three rolls off-camera in battles, and I still couldn't really understand it, and by rolls I mean like actual attempts, not rolls because you're literally rolling dice, <laughs> no pun intended on that one, but um, I got a few attacks in, but for the most part I really couldn't do much and I just got wrecked, so I'm going to try to avoid combat for the most part. There is going to be a guide in the Steam forums really soon, the developer says to explain it a bit better, because there is no tutorial in the game still for combat, 
and he also talked about the next version is going to probably be a little bit more fleshed out. And this version right now has a little bit of an issue when it comes to combat where it doesn't necessarily tell you when you could attack or not. So uh, it's a it's a known bug for the Alpha 10 version, but it's something that they're planning to work on for the next um, version. And he's also going to drop a guide in the Steam forum. So if you guys pick this game up, you guys don't understand the combat too, check out the Steam forums whenever this video goes up and it'll probably more than likely be there already. Um, alrighty, and we also have Sweetie McAllister, as much as a as much a tough warrior as a fine gentleman. Alrighty, and again, these right here are going to be for combat related. If I'm right, the eyes are for aimed attacks. I'm not entirely sure what the brain one might be. And then Charles Darwin has also has aimed ones and that. This should probably be for blocking. If I'm right, I'm not sure what the hand is. But again, if you hover over it, there's no information on it, so I can't really like you know come to a conclusion about it. You know, I'm over here just kind of guesstimating and spitballing. Alright, you are a whiskey expert. Increases game sanity when drinking whiskey. So that could be pretty useful if we could get some whiskey over here. Alrighty, so let's get on with our role here. We're going to go to this village really quickly and see what's happening over here. Enter the village. Let's deliver this letter. We entered a native, native village of a warrior tribe. A precious looking stone idol was placed in the village center. The natives observed us with caution. They were polite and offered us offered to help our cause. Thanks to Anupam Surabji and his ability to translate, we would be able to rest in the village. Excellent. Not that we need to right now. We're still at 101 of 110, so we're probably not going to rest right now, even though it'd probably be better to kind of um, relieve the stress. But I'm thinking at the same time, um, resting here might actually wear off some of the points with the indigenous people, so we might just want to use it when we actually really do need it, right? So um, let's start off over here by delivering the letter for one. We brought the letter to the village chief. To reward us, he told us about the best sights to see in the vicinity, including a holy shrine, which he marked on our map. Our time with the natives was a delight. They remained friendly and offered us more help. Perfect. And we had a pretty good um, outing with them. So as you can see here, from 10, we went up to 12. So now we have a little few more extra points to mess around with over here. So I'm not going to rest in the village just yet. Let's see if anybody wants to be recruited to the cause over here. We sat down and spoke with the natives to see if anyone was interested to seek fame and glory. And we have apparently an animal handler over here. An animal handler joined our trek. Our extended presence was perceived well by the natives. They remained kind and offered us more help. So we lost two points, but we're still, you know, in pretty decent standing with them. An elderly woman laid down some plants by the idol. Yeah, those are right there like hints, as in, you know, you could probably take that if you wanted to, but mm, could be a bad thing. But again, this game is all about risk and reward. Do you want to take the risk to get a bit of rewards? So it's kind of up to you. We're going to probably take it risky on occasion, too. Don't, don't you worry one bit. I'm not going to play it safe over here. Not, sometimes they will, not every time. Alright, so we could rest in the village, we could do some trading. Let's do some trading here really quickly and see what's available to us. Now remember, if we get some of these flutes over here, it's going to be more fame or possible funds, depending on which way we kind of roll with it here. So, uh, we don't have haggling this time around, unfortunately. There's also some rope. We could definitely use some rope as well for our tracks over here. So let's consider grabbing like one and two for now. We don't really have too much to barter with, but we do have some machetes here. The machetes make excellent tools for cutting all manner of things. They are particularly helpful for traversing jungles. Ah, so in jungles with the machete, you could actually use them to go through them a bit easier. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let me toss one of these guys in here. Again, the trade value for it isn't really too high. If you want to get higher trade values, have something like really interesting for them. Like, you know, marbles I hear are actually pretty good trade items just because they're kind of really weird and intricate for the um, tribes people over here. Um, so let me see about grabbing this horn flute. Oh, that's a lot right there. I don't think we'll be able to make that one. I'll give you a torch. Nah, not really your style, huh? Increases chance of fighting butterflies by 10, which is pretty good because, um, with, um, Darwin's, um, skill, if we could find more butterflies, it'd probably be better for our sanity overall. Let's see about dropping, like, you know, three machetes. Not crazy about throwing all these away, but I would like to get a horn flute already. And this will be for sanity as well. Uh, so is our chocolate here. So I'm not really sure. Let's see what if I throw one chocolate in there. That'd be kind of ideal, right? What if I took this from you? Nope, you're not interested in that. What if I took this? We're kind of close to one, but you're not really willing to spit game, are you? Um, two ropes in the flute for three machetes. What if I took one of these away? Oh, okay. So we could do two, one, and one. I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it. All right. So we got a trade in and we actually got a bit of extra points too, which is good. So, you know what I'm thinking we do? Now, if we rest in the village, we're going to be spending more days. Remember, the more days you spend in the continent, the less fame you get. So, for now, I'm actually just going to leave. We packed up the trek and departed as a new adventure awaited us. So, I'm not going to necessarily um, use that just yet. We have the shrine over here that the village chief did mark for us, which is pretty good. Let's look at our team over here now. We have TC Day. 
Alrighty, so with unmatched understanding of animals, this person is a fine choice if you want to gain the most of, uh, of your pack animals. Increases capacity of all pack animals. Excellent. So now our donkey should be able to carry a bit more because of Tacita over here. Now, the only problem with Tacita is, as you can see over here, he is homesick. Meaning, once we, assuming we finish this mission and we get back home, he's not going to leave with us. So he's going to go back home after we're done. So keep that in mind. I could promote him as well. We got enough region points. But if he's going to be staying here, what's the point, you know? Alrighty, so... We know our journey over here. Um, we can use a machete through here. Okay, so we have another point of interest over here as well. This is going to be 14 sanity points, and this is um, we still can't get to that one. Anything down over here that seems interesting? Not really. There is a mountain face sculpture over here. Not sure if I want to go towards that one. So let's come over here to the grasslands really quickly, just because I want to see what's over here. And more than likely, from here we could actually hit this um uh, this um uh, shrine up anyway. Now, right now, my compass is showing that the Golden Shrine should be somewhere to the southeast, roughly. Now, there's a trick to the Golden Compass, or the Golden Compass, this guy. The compass that I will actually show off once this, um... There's a certain landmark in the game that actually throws this off a bit, too. But I'll talk about that once we see it. Um, keep you a little bit in suspense here. So let's approach the trader. There's a possible trader over here. A wandering tradesman has set up camp here. The colorfully dressed trader had a lot of valuable goods on offer. Most of them seemed to be remains of other failed expeditions. Alrighty, let's go for trading here. He hesitated before presenting us a selection of his wares. He would not help but think that he was hiding, or we could not help but think that he was hiding something from us. Alrighty, so he's got some drums again. Fame. Oh, oh my friend, you are gouging my fucking eyes out over here. Empty canvas. Not sure what this is for, but apparently it's needed to draw pictures. Um, still not sure what the idea that would be behind, but I guess we'll find out. I would like to get some chocolate off of him just for sanity purposes. Remember, we did trade one away. Um, nah. Yeah, he's not willing to spit game. You know what? We should just probably bypass this one. I, I would like to grab a few of these items for sure, but I don't think we really have the trade value market to make it happen. Look at this. I mean, for one shovel, I have to give him, like, fuck, five? Oh, that's just way too much, I feel. What about a torch? We could do one torch and one of these for that. Torches are kind of really important, especially for dark places. We're going to run into a lot of dark places, too. You know what? No. I, I, I will, you know, swallow my pride and drop the five machetes just for one shovel. So we have a little bit of an assortment of different items that we could use for different events. Remember, all these items will have specific uses sometimes. So it's better to have like a big variety of them just so that you're kind of suited for most of the um, encounters here. So let's go ahead and deal. I'm not too crazy about it, but at least we have a shovel now. The merchants seem to expect to see us again as customers or the next failed expedition to free of their worldly profession, uh, processions. Okay. Alrighty. So 11, 20, 87 sanity points. Yeah, uh, shrine is somewhere to the east for the most part. Uh, we can make it over here with three machetes, apparently. Wow, I really rather not use all the machetes up, my friend. Either way, it's going to cost us all three of them just to get there. Uh, we could go through here and use a rope, though. We have two of them. Ah, oh, that's the problem with the machetes, man. They're all gone. What this is doing is that it's making me use the machetes, which is going to make me go through this jungle a lot easier and use up less... Um, Sanity points in the process. The only problem is that, you know, sometimes you don't really want to use your items just yet. But, you know, whatever. Let's go. We'll use up all three machetes already. Which is unfortunate. There goes one, two, and three. Alrighty, let's examine the shrine here. This right here, mountain. Something is here. Oh, we also have a possible danger up here, too. We should be really careful about that because, again, I'm trying to avoid combat. Examine shrine. A large building loomed in front of us. All manner of plant life grew towards the sun. Waist-high stairs led us to a doorway that could accommodate an elephant. The structure showed some big cracks, but it seemed safe to explore. So, if it sounds safe, maybe you should relax a bit. Maybe you should relax your bit, Sweeney. Maybe you should mind your business, right? Let's enter the shrine. We carefully entered a well-preserved ceremonial chamber. It was truly an awe-inspiring sight. An altar flooded by light, thrown into center. Uh, we're going to investigate the altar, obviously. Now, in this altar, we're finding tome page of water drain and the golden vase. Pure gold. This would be really amazing to take. Now, here's the chance this is going to happen. I'm going to grab these items and everything's going to start withering away or crumbling under my feet. We're not sure where the um, golden shrine is yet either, so that worries me a little bit. This could be bad, but you know what? Who dares lives, right? Let's grab these items. Let's um, close. <laughs> I would not leave empty-handed. We secured the treasure. The moment we obtained the treasure, the earth began to shake wildly. Oh, no. We hurried outside as the shrine was swallowed by the earth. Okay, this is the one that I was talking about last time. Yep. Everything's going to be basically being destroyed under our feet now. 
We need to find this golden shrine as soon as possible. You're still pointing me down almost towards southeast, huh? Well, we're going to have to go through that one. Now, the problem is here, if we get stuck anywhere, we're kind of boned. There seems to be a lot of ro um, mountains over here, too. Maybe I should have kind of explored this area before we decided to take that. Okay, so we're going to come over here. Um, the earth isn't actually swallowing itself underneath me. I'm surprised, but I'm not complaining. Okay, the one that I was thinking was going to happen was literally everything here was going to start cr uh, crumbling away and basically making a hole right to the center of the earth. But that didn't really happen, so I will take it as a good sign. We have an elevated position over here. Where are you pointing me to now, Go, uh, re fucking compass? Still down this way, huh? Okay. Um, if we get up to a hill, we can see better because it'll be elevated. However, we can't cross this big body of water here, so we're going to have to come down this way. We still have some chalk liver sanity starts going down a bit, too. What is this over here? Healing Springs. I've never been down to that one. This could be our golden shrine right here, guys. So we might just be able to make it after all. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking we just go there right now. Alrighty, golden shrine. We found another moth, too. So we found quite a few. I want to say, like, was it like the fourth one now or third one? And um, we have 20 more sanity points left. Do we want to risk it? No, I say we just explore this area and let's get out of here. We had a pretty good first run track over here. I have the golden vase. I have the tome page of water drain as well, so I'm feeling pretty good. The majestic golden pyramid rules above its environment, overcoming all the obstacles we had yet survived. Let's enter the pyramid. After weeks of traveling, euphoria overcame me. I knew that my name would be forever remembered. TC, they approached me and stated that he would not follow me to the civilized world, which is unfortunate. Now, here's the problem. With this guy leaving, we can carry everything now. So, um, I don't want to leave that behind. But I also don't want to dump any of this stuff. So, you know what? Man, this sucks so bad. Essentially, all those machetes they threw away for the shovel. If I want this to take this back with me, I need to drop something. And I think the shovel's the one that I'm willing to throw away. I'm not going to throw the shotgun away. Just in case we get into combat, we're going to need it. Uh, butterfly Ned, that actually gives us a better chance of butterflies, which is good, especially for um, Darwin's ability. Oh, this is really unfortunate. Really, really unfortunate. I'm not dropping the chocolate, not dropping the torch. Yeah. Alrighty, so here's what needs to happen. We need to grab this. And I'm sorry, shovel. What a waste that shovel was, that trade after all. Well, it happens. We need to get some more hands to help us carry more, or probably even get another... um. Either a donkey or a water buffalo, something to give us handy or carry and stuff. So, um, we'll finish our expedition over here. There we go. Alright, success. So let's see if this adds up. I'll take a little bit of coffee here, meanwhile. Ah, good coffee. Alrighty, so, we were here 28 days, we got 20 points off of butterflies. We have the golden pyramid for 100, so we're up to 102. Chances are we're going to be in last place, but we'll see how we look after we give in the items that we um, acquired from that other shrine. So, first one went pretty good. Nobody lost anything, nobody went crazy, so that's a really good start over here. We have a strong mind. Increases maximum sanity. That can be very ideal, especially with um, Darwin's ability to heal sanity with butterflies. We have geography. Gives additional information about your region. That could also be really, really good, as a matter of fact. And impetus. Reduce the base sanity cost for traveling. Honestly, these are really good for, um, you know, traveling purposes. But the geography one sounds so good, man. Like, be able to kind of know what's happening around the area. As opposed to just running in the dark. Do we want us to run in the dark with more sanity points, or do we just want to get a better idea and have less points? I think geography is the one to go with here. I guess I hope that's the right one. So we go with geography over here, and we'll see. Yeah, of course, I'm in last place. Oh my god. Man, you guys need to ease up over here. You guys take all the risk in the world and apparently have absolutely no, you know, well, I mean, you get all the rewards in the world, but absolutely, you know, don't even deal with the risk. I'm over here thinking about risk assessment, and you guys are over here like, yeah, cool, take everything from the shrine. I don't care. Alrighty, well, if we donate the golden vase, we're looking at 60 fame, which will bring us up to, you know, uh, between these guys right here. We could sell it as well for 40 funds. We have 30 funds right now. Um, I'm going to definitely gift this when it gets us up here a little bit. So at least I'm not completely in last place now. And with one more donation, we could probably at least give um, Estella Bird a run for her money. We'll probably get across some Crawley for sure, though. So we could sell this for 10 or donate it for 20. I'm going to go ahead and... This is the one that I think I'm going to gift. And we have the page over here, which is going to be 20 and 10 as well. Oh, actually, I actually am in first place now. Good. So do we continue 
donating a bit more to kind of give us up front, or do we sell this for 10 funds so we could buy something from the market? You know what? I am going to actually gift it. I'm going to keep myself ahead as much as I can, because I would like to actually beat the game legitimately here. So, 203. I'm a little bit ahead of these guys, which is pretty ideal. Let's continue going forward here. And now we are at point with our, our second expedition here. We have uh, Africa and we have Australia. One or the other. Both of them are going to be harsh um, harsh and desolate area. Desolate area. So both of them are going to be kind of difficult, unfortunately, for us to kind of um, traverse over here. But so be it. Alrighty, we're going to call an episode here, though. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a like. The support does mean a lot. Stay tuned for episode number two. And we're going to continue going with the Curious Expedition here. And um, again, leave a thumbs up. Leave a like. The support it does mean a lot, especially for a new series. And if you want this to kind of go further from just a mini-series point of view, then your support really does mean a lot. I will catch you next time.